Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're here with another power app and it's gonna be a pretty short one in general, but I'm here to show you how to kind of test how long your functions take in power apps. So you click a button, you know, you can go to the networking, you can go to the inspect element, go to the networking, try to see how long like an API call or even like setting a collection, how long that takes. But you know, that that's kind of hard to see and you know you kind of have to estimate sometimes so i'm just going to show you guys how to do it directly in power apps and see exactly how long your functions are going to take in it so you can kind of plan out accordingly how long things are going to take and make them more efficient but before we start make sure you like comment and subscribe that really helps me out and uh especially the like part just just like the video like right now just do it and you know we'll, we'll all be good there but yep um let's get started and uh yeah so here we have our stock ticker API from last time, the last few videos, and let me just show you how it works yet again. Remember, we're typing in stock tickers and it's gonna display the prices, and um, yeah. So when I click this submit button right here, it's just going to call an API and it's gonna take a little bit of time. So let's click on it, and these values should change accordingly there we go there we go and there we go and you know that took a little bit of time and i'm not sure how long it took i want to know um i want like an exact number pretty exact number so how do we do that and you guys can use this to time functions how long it takes how long it takes to query your data whatever you want there so it's pretty simple all you have to do is you go to input and you go to timer right here so you have a timer and this timer is actually in seconds if you start the if you start the timer this will go up by each second so every second it goes up it goes up right um, but you know we don't want seconds because that's kind of difficult to tell um, we want a more accurate reading so what you have to do is you have to click on the timer right here we're at timer two and go down to the text property text right there and you can see that there's already some stuff in there and you know they're they're dividing it by a thousand for you so their value there's a self dot value and they're just dividing it by a thousand for you we don't want that we just want the value which is going to be in milliseconds so if we type in self dot value the timer is going to display a zero but it's going to be in milliseconds so currently the timer is displaying zero milliseconds and that's what we want because you know sometimes these api call api calls can be really speedy so we want to know like that exact timing cool so we have that self dot value there. So how do we actually link this to the function? Well, what we want to do is we want to go to the timer again, go to the start property, and then let's change this to a variable so that we can change it whenever our function starts. And then we can change it back to stop when our function stops. So let's change it to timer, uh, let's say timer start. And that's going to be a boolean right it's gonna be true or false but we haven't set the variable yet it's gonna give us an error no problem we're gonna set it soon so let's just remember that it's timer start i'm just gonna copy that over and then let's go over to our function right here right so this function is just basically three asynchronous functions right this happens first uh that calls the api right here it's waiting it's waiting okay got the return and then it's going to go to the next one it's waiting it's waiting got the return cool and then it goes to the next one calls the function waits for the return and boom how long does that take how can we tell well all we have to do is we want to go to we want to reset the timer to dot um yeah we just want to reset timer two right that's our first step and then we want to set a value and so let's type in set and then we want to do timer no we want to set our variable which is timer start and then we want to set that to true we do want to start the timer right there right so the, our function our actual like function that we're timing right here are these three functions so our first thing is in, in the beginning of the function we're going to type in reset so we want to reset the timer and then we're gonna start the timer. And then at the end of the function, all we have to do is we just have to stop the timer. And to do that, we just uh, set our timer start to false. And make sure you include your semicolons there if it's asynchronous. And you know, if you want it to be synchronous, you can also include that um, concurrent function as I mentioned in my previous video. But we're just gonna keep this asynchronous so you guys can check out how, how long it takes. So that should be about it. Right, we just reset the timer, we set the timer to true, we're starting the timer, we do our functions, all that, and once that's all done, we're going to go ahead and stop our timer. So let's check out how it works. 
So here we have everything, we're, we, and we logged it to, we coded it to this submit button. So let's play. Let's change up our tickers. Let's do that one to NVIDIA, Apple. You know, I'm just using different tickers so you guys can see how long it takes. So once I click the submit button, this timer should start and it should be displayed in milliseconds. So there it is. Started the timer. You can see it's going. The API is loading, loading. Okay, just loaded everything. Boom, there it is. 4,800, it took 4,800 milliseconds for this function to run, this API call to run, that's 4.8 seconds. You can also log it to this concurrent function. And you know what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just see how, how much of a difference it makes. So let's go over to our first submit button, copy over that code, right? And this, since this is concurrent, I'm just gonna put that in front of that concurrent same thing, we're going to start the timer. Let's go back to our other code right here. I'm going to copy that code at the end, and then I'm going to run it. Make sure you put that semicolon, and there we go. So we, so I'm, I'm this is kind of a, this is kind of a runoff of my last video as well, um, I guess. So that took 4,800 4, milliseconds, as we can remember. Let's press play. So this one's the concurrent function. Let's see how long that one takes. Uh, let's you know, type in the same tickers again just in different spots. Uh, let's do Apple for that one, right? So I'm gonna run the concurrent one. Let's see how long this one takes, ready? Boom, boom, boom. 1.45 seconds, 1450 milliseconds. That is nearly three times faster than our asynchronous function. So our synchronous function is 1.45 seconds. Asynchronous function was about 4.8 seconds. And that's how you do it, guys. That's how you time your functions. It helps you with debugging, or you can, you know, even implement this into your app somehow if you have a use case. Can't really think of one right now, but you can definitely do that. So that's all you have to do, guys. Um, yeah. So make sure you like this video if it was helpful. Comment down below or subscribe and subscribe, not or. Make sure you do all that. Help me make more videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, what's up? Quick note, make sure you check out my latest video, not my latest, but one of my latest videos about power apps and iOS differences and similarities. Just wanted to put it out there that they're really cool and the similarities and differences, you know, they're kind of similar, but uh, a little bit different also, but I just go over that, how to make a button in power apps, how to make a button in iOS programming. And you know, it's, it's really fulfilling when you can have two kind of skills on iOS and power apps at the same time. You can throw that iOS application to the app store and your power apps are also helpful to your organization as well. So check out that video. Thanks.